number one, the best time to get tested is when you're really feeling great. When you're feeling the very best you've ever felt running, get a test done, particularly a blood test. I mean, most people wait until they feel miserable and then they go get a blood test to see why they're feeling miserable. And hemoglobin obviously is a very important characteristic in the blood because hemoglobin in the blood carries the oxygen to the running muscles. And a typical hemoglobin value is about 14 to 16.5. Now a 14 hemoglobin means you've got 14 grams of hemoglobin for every 100 grams of blood. You got 14 grams of hemoglobin for every 100 milliliters of blood. That's the nice thing about the metric system. The milliliters and the grams are the same thing, basically. Um, so often, the computers that are used in doctor's offices say a normal hemoglobin is like 12.5 to 15 or something like that. Well, if you want to be a secretary, 12.5 would be probably okay. If you want to be a runner, you better get it higher than that. You know, I'm not saying you're sick if you're not 14, but I'm saying 14 would be a whole lot better number to run with than a 12.5. My wife was anemic when she was started in college. She has a Mediterranean form of anemia in her family. And her hemoglobin, she was feeling bad, and that's when she got tested, when she was feeling bad. Her hemoglobin was 10.4. In four weeks of iron supplements, she improved her 5K time by four minutes. Four minutes. Each gram of hemoglobin, every gram of hemoglobin, the difference between a 10 and an 11 is about 40 seconds in a 5K, one gram. You can't go around with bad nutrition. Now you can go too high, and some people will start taking iron supplements and driving their hemoglobin. The problem with getting too high when you start getting up around, well, in cycling and cross-country skiing, if it's more than about a 16.5, you're illegal. They're assuming you're doping. You can't even start the race. Now they don't go by hemoglobin, they go by hematocrit. Hematocrit is what fraction of your blood is made up of blood cells. So if you have a tube of blood this tall and you spin it on a centrifuge, all the cells pack down the bottom, and what percentage of that total represents the blood cells? And that number is about, the, just the, the mathematical number is about three times your hemoglobin. It's a, if you had a 15 hemoglobin, you'd have about a 45 hematocrit. And what the, what the drug people look for is you're illegal if you have over a 50 hematocrit. Now, some people have over 50 even, and are perfectly legal. So they've never done that with running. They've never done that rule yet. But cross-country skiing and cycling, they do. Over a 50 hematocrit, you're illegal. And, uh, and that's about a four, you know, that's about a 16 high hemoglobin. And the disadvantage of a high hemoglobin or a high hematocrit is your blood's getting very thick. And your heart doesn't like pumping syrup around. It likes pumping water around. And if it gets too thick, it's like pumping a very syrupy substance around, and it's stressful on the heart. So it, there's a reason for not wanting it to be too high. So. You'd like to be around 14, 15, something like that, and each gram is a big, big difference. But once you get over about 16, and each gram may not, it might increase the carrying capacity, but the blood's getting so thick that your heart can't pump as many liters a minute. So, so you still can't deliver any more oxygen, even though each liter of oxygen delivers more blood, but now you can't pump as many liters because it's too thick. 